Hi, I wanted to give my thoughts about the recent geopolitical events that have perspired. Today, I was reading in the newspaper that the European Union has founded another European Union called the European Political Community, which includes 44 nations, four of which aren't even in Europe. Turkey, Armenia, Azerbaijan and Georgia, which are all Central Asian nations, uh, have somehow joined the European political community. And when you look at where these countries are on a map, you can clearly see that this is all intended to surround Russia. And I know why all of this is happening, because I've read the book by Zbigniew Brzezinski, the American geopolitical strategist, who wrote several books, such as The Grand Chessboard. And if you read these books, you know that the plan is, according to Brzezinski, to isolate China. And you can only isolate China by first surrounding China, and this you achieve by first invading Russia, breaking up Russia to disable its power base. And then you can isolate China and basically force China into the role of a global supplier forever. Uh, thereby preventing that China may ever become the new global superpower. This is what everybody seems to think is going to happen. All the great minds, including, say, Ray Dalio, and who wrote a book about this topic, and other people, they seem to believe that the greatest threat to the U.S. power base is China, and in order to force China into a submissive role, we have to isolate China, and we achieve this by first plowing through Russia. If you're very smart, if you know anything about strategic thinking, you might already know why is the US government allowing so many states now to ban abortions? Guess why? The US Army today already has a recruiting crisis. Uh, there are not enough young men and apparently almost no women willing to join the US military anymore. Um, this may have something to do with another fact that half of Americans are obese and that even half of young men in America are also obese. By banning abortions today, you know you're going to have a baby boom about 15 to 20 years from now, meaning a baby boom of young soldiers who will, come, who will become available 15 to 20 years from now, depending on how young they have to be when you send them to war. Do they have to be 15 or is 18 or 20 old enough? Um, you can guess then that the American strategists who are thinking in this manner, they are planning to invade Russia uh, no later than 20 years from now. So between now and 2040, 2042, we're going to see the US invasion or well, the NATO led, US led invasion of Russia, which will also require a lot of young European men to go over to the battlefield to the east and die for empire. Now, it's one thing to make these plans, but it's another thing to make them come true. I believe something else might happen. What is the next plausible scenario outside of the US invading Russia with the help of the European armies, breaking up Russia and then isolating China? What is the next most plausible scenario? I believe it is this. I believe that the United States is gonna implode under the weight of its own degeneracy. The United States is um, a fractured nation that for the past, certainly for the past 20 years or so, has been incessantly discriminating against, discriminating against white men. It has really put white men aside, outside of their society, saying you are nothing, you are worthless, you are no good. Now, you might want to do this to sever the white men of the US in order to then send them to war against Russia. Assuming those white men still care about your nation at all, right? Uh, there is, of course, the alternative possibility is that the big, a large cohort of the white US males are going to turn against their own government and going to say, we've had enough of this incessant pestering and discrimination against us. But the much bigger issue here, the greater undercurrent here, is that we are literally back in the age before World War I. We are back in the age of Otto von Bismarck, the German unifier who united all the separate German states into one Germany as we know it today. 
He then fought the French with support from the Russians. There, he had good diplomatic ties with Russia, so Russians gave him uh, cover in his back, in his Prussian back, and then they could move into, march on to Paris in the end. Um, to see the bigger picture here, you have to see the British Empire on one side in the West controlling the Atlantic Ocean, the Atlanticists as we call them, and on the other side you have the former Russian Empire controlling the heartland or what is called the heartland. This is uh, the heart of the Eurasian continent that spans from Ireland to Vladivostok or to Japan and so on. Europe, especially Germany, as the, still Europe's most powerful economy, play a very special role in this, a role that von Bismarck understood very well. Namely, Germany can make the difference. If Germany, if German economy allies with Russia, it could destroy the British Empire. But if the British Empire manages to somehow sabotage the German industry, and thereby also cutting off income to the Russian Empire, then the British Empire might, might successfully march onto Moscow and take the heartland and then isolate China. We are still, still stuck in these almost childish uh, war games over global power. Who will win the world? Who will rule the world? Um, and the game is being played between the former British, the former British Empire, which is now uh, what we might call the Anglo-American sphere or the Atlantic sphere, which includes Western Europe, because after World War II, Western Europe was colonized by the US and so on. Eastern Europe was colonized by the Russians for a while, but then Eastern Europe was liberated again and joined the European Union. But the European Union then now finds itself at the heart of this conflict. And it is very clear that the European Union Union has already decided to side with the US Anglo Empire, the American Empire. Mind you, a lot of US citizens, if you tell them they're living in a US Empire, they'll laugh at you because they're not even aware of the fact that their nation isn't a nation anymore. Their nation is an empire, right? The same thing with the Russian citizens. They might not realize that Putin is trying to rebuild the Russian Empire. Now, me as a European caught in the middle of this crossfire between uh, NATO, US, uh, Atlantic interests, and then the Russian, Asian interests. On the other hand, we Europeans should know one thing, and one thing very, very clearly, is that we are going to make the difference. We are the ones who are going to make the decisions that will write the history. Because we can either have diplomatic ties with Russia for their resources and crush the Anglo Empire, or we're going to side with the American British NATO and then try to invade Russia and then isolate China. Or there's the third alternative, and that's the one I'm going to aim for. What about this? What if we do away with all this classical thinking about geopolitics? And we, real, and we realize that the Europeans, over six or 700 million of us, are living here in the European continent, which is almost twice as much as there are people living in the United States of America. And did you also know that the combined wealth of the Europeans is greater than that of the combined wealth of the US citizens? We in Europe have the people, the money, and effectively, due to our geopolitical location, our geographic location on the planet, we, help, we also have the power to rule the world ourselves. Why let the British do it, and the Anglo and the Americans? Why let the Russians and their Chinese allies do it when we can do it ourselves? If we Europeans would find within our hearts the spirit, the spark, you know, the fire of Prometheus to build up our strength from within, I believe 20 years from now, both the US and Russia will fall, and Europe, like a phoenix, will rise from the ashes of the Second World War and rule the world.